Hello guys, welcome back to another video here on the Banjo Attic page. Thank you so much for pushing that play button. In today's video, I'm going to go over 10 of the most common mistakes new players on Banjo make and maybe how to avoid doing them. Alright guys, so coming in at number 10 on this list is building up calluses on your fingers. I see a lot of people when they start playing banjo, of course it hurts and you put uh, uh, calluses on your fingers and it gets raw and it starts hurting and you want to quit and not do it for a week or two till your fingers heal up. I've seen people put glue on them. I've seen people try to wear uh, gloves. I've seen people try to do all kinds of things to get around uh, just building up the calluses on your calluses. <laughs> calluses on your fingers. Uh, there's no way around it. You got to do it. I recommend, I mean, don't play them till your fingers bleed, of course, uh, but give yourself a day or two in between rounds, uh, but it's going to be sore for a week or two until you really get them calluses built up on them fingers and you really need those calluses on there. All right, guys, number nine is I see a lot of banjo players that are new to playing the banjo. They try to compare themselves to either people they've seen on YouTube or other people playing maybe in a jam session or something and you see them playing and you're like, I don't want to play around those people because they'll either make fun of me or I'm not as good as they are. I'll never be that good. And they kind of get detrimental on themselves when they're, when they're doing that. And it kind of takes away from them learning the banjo because as they're playing it, they're always thinking, hey, that wasn't as good as so-and-so done it or that wasn't as good as this person. Don't, my advice there is don't compare yourself to other banjo players. Number eight on the list, guys, is a biggie. It's a biggie. Uh, I've seen a lot of a lot of people starting the banjo uh, do this and it, it's just, you just, a lot of people do this and it's not a good habit to get into. They think that if they buy the next best pick or the next best bridge or the next best set of strings or the next best tailpiece or the next best this, that it's going to make them play better. When in essence, it's not. It may make the banjo sound better, but until you get so far down the road, you shouldn't even be worried about that. You shouldn't be worrying about changing your bridge, your tailpiece, all these different things. Um, you know, until you get one or two songs under your belt at least. Uh, that's what I would say. But I've seen a lot of people say, man, I've got to get this certain kind of pick because it just fits my finger. I know it'll, I'll play better, you know, kind of deal to where not necessarily. Uh, that'll happen later on down the road. You might be able to fine tune with some of those things and make it sound a little better or, you know, things of that nature. But it's not going to make you a better banjo player just because you have the latest set of st strings on your banjo that have just come out and they're magic kind of deals. Uh, there's no magic in banjo outside of practicing. Number seven guys goes along kind of with number eight, but I see uh, some people that I've tried to help play banjo before, they make practicing their banjo a chore instead of making it fun. And what I mean by that is like trying to learn chords. Um, they make it a they make it a chore like, oh, I've got to go sit down and, and practice chords for, for an hour um, and I recommend that you don't make practice a chore. No matter how you go about your practice session, don't make it a chore. If you want to sit down and kind of get warmed up and get started and you want to try practicing a the song, then practice a the song. Uh, you know, like as far as learning the chords, and like I've said before in, in other videos, uh, and I'll put a link up here to it, easy song to learn and it'll, it'll teach you to fret the chords uh, the way you're supposed to is Rocky Top. If you'll learn a simple version of Rocky Top and either whether you three finger it or you strum it, then that that's all the chords. There's a uh, there's a C in it, an F, a D, a C, like I said, there's an E minor. Uh, and you can even go to a D7 if you don't want to get the full D on the chord uh, when you do it. You can always go to a D7 up here to make that easier. Uh, there's an F chord that'll teach you an F chord and you're switching between chords as you're doing it. So it kind of teaches that whole thing. So if you're interested in that, watch the video. But like I'm saying is just make practice fun. Don't make it a chore. Don't be like, oh my God, I've got to go downstairs and practice banjo for an hour. And you know, cause after a while it will get to feel that way. But as long as you make it fun, like I've learned this song and I'm gonna play it or I'm gonna do this or do that and stay away from, from like, I've got to grind, I've got to grind. And there's times you're gonna have to do that. But as the more fun you make it, the longer you'll practice and the faster you'll get better. All right, again, staying on kind of the practice situation. Uh, here's another problem that I see with a lot of, of 
people starting to play the banjo is the correct posture when they're trying to practice banjo. Now, when you practice banjo, you kind of want to be set straight up in your seat. You don't want to be slouched back and you don't want to have this number right here going on um, because it's it, first and foremost, you've got to reach your arm so much further around here and you're just all out of, you're all out of sync. So always make sure that when you practice your banjo, whether it's three finger style, claw hammer, whatever it is, and mainly this is really goes for any instrument, you want to sit up straight in your chair and have the instrument straight on you and your arm across it where you can, you can, you can fret everything and do everything right, right here. And that way, because in the end result, say if you were to stand up and play, that's the way you're going to be standing up to play anyway, when you, you ain't going to have the banjo out like this laid back. And uh, so as you're practicing and as you're trying to learn, uh, it's a very important that you keep your, your back straight and sit, sit up straight in the chair. Uh, and when I say posture, I'm not necessarily, I am talking about the back, but that's not the only part of it. The same part of posture is your arm posture. Uh, you, you don't want your arm up here and, and trying to practice banjo. You know, you want your elbow down at your side and your wrist down. That way you can reach every chord and everything you're trying to do here as far as uh, strumming everything. Oh, I missed that one. <laughs> I missed that D chord. Uh, but anyways, it you get your wrist out. So I'm saying, so you get in that correct posture and you get used to this arm being in and this being up, then everything works the same. Now, later on, five, six years down the road, if you're a savant and playing just wonderfully, yeah, sit on your back porch and lay back, play it however you want to do it. But I recommend as you're starting out, when you're practicing, I recommend straight back, elbow in, wrist out and and really practice with that posture all right guys we're in the we're in the top five now here's the top five things of mistakes you need to avoid when you're a beginner on the banjo uh coming in at number five when you're beginning on the banjo you try to play too fast especially three finger style and this is mainly the three finger style i'm talking about you try to go too fast with your fingers and and you um are trying to move and put everything together and you're going too fast well what happens not only does that lead to mistakes you're practicing mistakes when you go that way and you're trying to go faster than what you need to but also what you're teaching yourself is tension in your arms and your hands so when you're starting practicing the slower you practice and that goes along with it and i know i've said it a million times but the slower you practice and kind of get it where it's just it's 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 uh what do you call it it's not like tension, like this stressful, like trying to, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, you know, kind of deal. Just get it to where your, your fingers are just kind of natural, just rolling, and you're going through, the, going through the songs. And then as you get faster and faster and faster, it won't seem like you're going faster, but you are. And you're going to take all that tension out of your forearms and out of your hands and stuff. There's times that I play now that I can tell that I'm trying to play too fast, and I got to stop. I just got to shake my hands out and get it all out of me and like, okay, I'm, I'm trying too hard. I'm thinking about it too much or whatever. Kind of get back to loosey-goosey with my fingers and then go back into playing like I need to play. Number four kind of goes with number five, guys. We're going to go to uh, number four, which is uh, don't try to move on from material you're working on too quick. Uh, and I say this because when I first started playing the banjo, I was going through classes with my teacher. Well, my end result was getting to Foggy Mountain Breakdown. I wanted to get to Foggy Mountain Breakdown. That's all I cared about was getting to Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Now, I would learn the lessons that he would teach me each week, and I would learn them well enough to go into class and be able to play them for him and do it for him to more or less a pass, so I could get a passing grade so I could go into the next the next lesson or whatever it was so I could work on it and go into the next lesson because the faster I felt like I got through the lessons, the faster I was going to get to Foggy Mountain Breakdown and learn it. Well, in the end result... That's completely wrong. <laughs> I should have never done that. I should have took more time with each lesson and really internalized it and um, really, you know, really just sink into each lesson, which I didn't do. Uh, and, it, and, you know, at the end of three or four years or whatever it was when I got to Foggy Mountain, or two years, I can't remember what it was. But anyways, by the time I got to Foggy Mountain Breakdown, yeah, I got it and I could play it. But if we went back and tried to play some of the songs that was learning up through the lessons... I didn't have them memorized. I didn't have them in my brain. I had to relearn them later on uh, and really sink my teeth into them to try to learn them. So 
my one of my main advice is is like if you're trying to learn especially if you got a teacher is don't try to rush yourself through the lessons too quick number three on the list guys is people try to learn above their skill level um, if you're starting out on the banjo understand that you're at a certain point and you're working on that point it kind of goes with the the last uh, number four don't try to play above your skill level and again uh, like I was talking about foggy mountain breakdown a while ago as I'm going through the lessons he gave me a book and at the end of the first series book was foggy mountain breakdown well as I'm practicing during the weeks I was going flipping back to foggy mountain breakdown and trying to play it before I was ever ready before I ever learned the techniques or had them down that I needed to play foggy mountain breakdown with or uh, internalized them in my brain and in my muscle memory. I never, like I kind of skipped that and went to it and kind of, you know, uh, played around with it. So anyways, don't try to learn stuff above your skill level. Learn, learn the songs and learn the techniques that you need to learn right now. And I know everybody wants to learn, uh, you know, dealing banjos or foggy mountain breakdown or, um, you know, all these Rubens train, all these songs that are wonderful, um, folk songs that everybody loves and everybody wants to learn to play them, but also sit back and, and, and know that you're on your journey and you've got to learn these techniques before you get there. Don't get ahead of yourself. You know, I guess what I'm trying to say, don't put your, uh, don't put your cart before the horse on it. So, you know, really spend your time with the lessons that you're working on and really internalize everything. Cause I promise you later on, uh, four or five years down the road, 10 years down the road, the more time you spend on stuff now is going to pay tenfold by the time you get five or six years down the road if you spend the time now doing that and don't get in a hurry all right guys we're down to number two on our list number two is people don't play in front of friends and family um like if you got uh if you've got a wife or if you've got parents or if you've got uh different things going on in your life and i ain't saying you have to cram it down their throat that's not what i'm saying at all uh, but, you know, once a month, tell your parents or tell your wife or tell your kids, hey, I'd just like to go out here on the back porch. I'm not very good, but I just want to play some stuff and I want to hear you all play it. Uh, and spend five or ten minutes playing in front of them. Just, just to get that feeling of somebody watching you playing because it, it, it's a whole different feeling when if you're playing by yourself down in your den versus out on the deck in front of your family you know what i'm saying and even at a family gathering if you get uh, if you get together with family and everybody's over just say hey uh, i'm not very good i just want to come out here and play in front of people how many ever it is your uh family your aunts your uncles whoever uh your you know your wife your in-laws your sister-in-law brother-in-law whatever if you have a get together just say hey i'm not going to play long and I, I know i'm not very good i just want to Give me five minutes, five, ten minutes out here in front of everybody because I want to show you all first what I'm, what I'm working on. And that gives you the opportunity to play in front of people. It kind of takes that taboo out of it for you. And I'm telling you, if you do that, and I'm not saying you have to do it every time you have a get-together or whatever, but, you know, once a month, once every two months, just say, hey, I just, you know, I've been practicing for a couple of months since last time. I just want to see if anybody notices if I'm any better, you know, and get your banjo out and kind of play through a song or two. All right, guys, last but not least, number one on my list that beginner banjo players don't do either out of fear or um, they don't feel like it's worth it or what have you is go to jam sessions. You've got to go to jam sessions uh, as a beginner banjo player. I don't care if you've been playing for a week. I don't care if you've been playing for five months. If you have a jam session around your, around your neighborhood or around your community, go to it whether you just sit there for the first couple of weeks and watch other people play or whether you take your banjo and you just start like figuring out chords and strumming it's a good way to work on chords because you can watch them and you can you you can you can be real quiet in the back and just kind of work on your chords as they're going through it and watch them so i'm saying you can just laugh missed that D four times so you know you can sit in the back and kind of do that and after a while you'll kind of get into picking a little bit you know what I'm saying and again it's just like playing in front of friends and family it takes that taboo away from it so uh, that's one my number one thing that you need to do as a beginner on the banjo to avoid that mistake of not going to jam sessions you got to do 
All right, guys, that's my top 10 mistakes that banjo players, uh, beginner banjo players make on the banjo. I've got two bonus or extra or whatever you say uh, tips for beginners on banjo that uh, I want to throw in here. We'll just throw out uh, just a couple of uh, extras, I guess you could say. Number one is learn the anatomy of your banjo. Learn the bridge, what it does. When you change it, what sounds it's going to change. Learn what your tailpiece does. Learn what the head of it does. Learn what the pot assembly does. Learn what the neck does. Learn what the truss rod does. Learn your uh, tuning pegs on there. You know, learn everything you can. Read a lot about your banjo and what changes and things that make on your banjo. That way, you'll you'll be more educated about it and uh, you'll know. Like, I, I don't like this sound. I'm thinking that's because this bridge is too blah, blah, blah. Or these strings are blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? It'll give you an idea in your head like some of the changes you might want to make on your banjo. And the other bonus tip that I would like to give is every banjo player should be listening to banjo music. Uh, I've got, uh, I don't know, 37 albums on my iPhone right now of different banjo players. Claw Hammer, uh, Three Finger Style. I even got some uh, tenor, tenor banjo on there, plectrum banjo uh, stuff. I mean, I love all kinds of different kinds of banjo, but uh, I, I don't have time to learn them. <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, I have all kinds of banjo music on there because I just love the sound of the banjo. And I think that it will help anybody out that wants to learn to play the banjo to be listening to banjo music because uh, it just kind of gets you in that in that feel. You know what I'm saying? You um, you can hear that banjo music kind of gets you going like, oh, yeah, that's, I can do that, you know, and then you want to go practice it. But uh, the bonus tip of the day is you've got to listen to banjo music. All right, guys, thank you all so much for pushing that play button. I greatly appreciate it. If you've enjoyed the content, please consider smashing that like button, guys. And with that being said, we'll see you on the next video.